Okay, let's get back to the rest of the circuitry. So we got the heater voltage, we got the tube warmed up, and now the next thing we need to do, and let's take a look at the 6U8 tube here. This is a dual section tube. On the left you see it's a pentode and on the right it's a triode. Well, in addition to the heater, which is those two connections at the bottom, we need to make connections to the plate, which is this pin, grid one, maybe grid two, depending on whether it's uh, connected, whether it's that's actually a pentode or not, and maybe grid three, which is pin seven over here. So cathode, at least one grid, probably a second grid if it's a pentode, and a plate. So where do we get those voltages? Well, over here, the screen voltage comes through this circuit, through this rectifier, which is a selenium rectifier, and I've replaced it with a silicon diode. It comes out here, and it produces about 150 volts in my tester on this line. That goes all the way across and comes out here as 140 volts at the screen connection. The reason it's a little lower than 150 is because there's a resistor in series and a filter capacitor to clean up that, uh, that voltage. That's where the screen comes from. The grid gets a bias voltage which has to be negative. Well, that's what this rectifier is for. It produces a negative voltage. Notice that this capacitor, the negative is here and the positive is connected to ground. That produces a negative voltage here. And that negative voltage eventually gets connected to this high bias position. And then it gets divided down through resistors to a medium bias, a low bias, and eventually a zero bias. Those are the signals that connect to the grid. Now there's also an additional signal in the case of mutual conductance that we'll get to. But the plate is a little bit unusual in mutual conductance testers. In this particular tester, which uses the Hickox circuit, the plate actually is supplied through this Type 83 tube. Actually, it comes off of the center tap, right there, of the filament transformer, and eventually winds up over here as GM1 and GM2. GM, of course, is the universal symbol for mutual conductance, and 1 and 2 refer to whether it's position 1 on this switch or position 2. So how does that work? Well, if you can figure out this schematic by looking at it, you're a better man than I am, Charlie Brown, because I haven't been, ever been able to do this. What I have been able to do is understand the descriptions in the Army Technical Manual on the TV-7, which is the same circuit, but it's just a military version of the Hickok circuit. They introduce it this way. They say, suppose that you have a rectifier and you have a load resistor in the cathode of the rectifier. And then over here you have a resistor that's divided in half with the tap tied to the other end of the load resistor. What will then happen is that the current that comes through this plate and the current that comes through this other plate will both flow down. During one half cycle it will flow through this side. During the other half cycle it will flow through this side. If you put a meter across that, and if the tube is relatively balanced, the rectifier, that meter will indicate zero. Now, if you vary that load resistance, the meter will move. The reason is, as you vary the load resistance, the plates will conduct more or less than they were before, and the meter will show that. So in other words, they're basically using a uh, 
an AC signal and a DC meter. How do they do that? Well, what they do is they put the tube under test in the middle. That's the load resistor. They apply a fixed bias to this grid. Then they also apply an AC signal. The AC signal makes this tube's resistance change and as it changes that meter will indicate how much above the bias point and below the bias point that the tube is conducting. Well that is essentially the mutual conductance. In other words, it's the variation of plate current to grid voltage. And that's how they do it in the Hickox circuit. The B and K circuit is pretty much the same way using an 83 tube, that's the rectifier, following the center tap down and over to the GM. That goes to the plate of the tube, remember the 6U8 here, that goes to the plate. So we've got an AC signal on the grid, the cathode is connected to ground, that's this pin over here. So that's basically how the mutual conductance circuit works. There is one small difference, however. In the B and K, instead of using a line voltage rheostat, the B and K tries to correct for line voltage changes with this little bridge circuit. The bridge circuit is made up of two number 55 bulbs, and you notice there's AC on the top and bottom of the bridge, here and here, coming from this transformer. That AC is coupled through this line and eventually is connected to the zero bias line. In other words, the bottom of this chain of resistors is moving up and down at an AC rate determined by this transformer primary or secondary and this bridge circuit. Now what happens is as the line voltage goes up the voltage across this bridge goes up and those two number 55 bulbs that are on opposite sides of this uh, bridge conduct differently. They basically have a negative resistance and that negative resistance reduces the signal voltage. So in other words, as the line voltage goes up, signal voltage goes down. And that is how they control the signal to the tube for measuring mutual conductance. I think I'll break off here and continue with a little, a few more points in the next video.